Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warplanes and today we're going to be taking a look another look at the XF-85 Goblin. It is a tier, the only tier 9 premium in the game and it's a, an American light fighter. Now if you guys have followed the channel you will know that I have already reviewed the Goblin but I did not own the Goblin. Today I own the Goblin thanks to a significant amount of effort put in during the fall campa campaign I got this for absolutely free except for my time I put a lot of time into it so is it really free it's free because I got a lot of great prizes al prizes along the way this is kind of just a bonus honestly I would have kind of preferred the JL1837 that they were offering instead but my clan convinced me to get the goblin so here I have it so yes, I know I've already reviewed it, but because I own it, I want to take another look at it and see if this plane is truly as bad as I made it sound in the in the last review. And has my opinion changed at all? Well, short answer, no. The, my opinion still stands that you will make more credits on a tier 8 premium that you enjoy over this plane. But, I've already made this video, I tried recording it, and I didn't like how it turned out. So I'm doing it again. <laughs> I'm redoing the whole dumb thing. Um, and I'm going to do it right this time. So I'm going to compare the Goblin to the FJ-1 Fury, which is the standard American tier 9 light fighter because I think it is similar to the Fury in a lot of ways. But I also want to compare it to something that you may not expect, and that is the Tier 8 F8M. But there's also one more plane I want to compare it to, and that's going to be the uh, Tier 8 non-premium American Light Fighter, the P51H. And why am I comparing it to the P-51H and the J-8M? You will soon find out. Um, but I'm going to pull up the Goblin stats and we're going to take a look at it. I will say this. Trying to specialize this plane without spending tokens is one of the worst things I've ever done in this game. Holy crap is it bad. It is horrible. I don't wish anyone to have to grind up specialization on this plane. It, it's something else. But here we are. The first thing I want to talk about is the firepower of the Goblin. If right off the bat, you will notice that the Goblin has the worst firepower out of this comparison. And indeed, it has the worst firepower out of any tier 8 or below aircraft. I am dead serious. It has worse firepower than any tier 8s and lower, and it, and it is at tier 9. Furthermore, if we take a look at this comparison, it has the second worst uh, survivability, only worse or only better than the J8M, which sacrifices all survivability to gr to gain uh, ridiculous altitude performance and uh, top tier airspeed for the tier. So, right off the bat, you have some of the worst stats at Tier 9, and heck, even at Tier 8, these are abysmal stats. Having only 4 50 cal machine guns, you are getting 2 less machine guns than the FJ-1 Fury, which, in my opinion, is still underpowered in terms of firepower. In fact, the Fury has one of the worst firepowers at the Tier. In fact, before the Goblin came into the game, I'm pretty sure the FJ-1 did have the worst firepower at Tier 9. Uh, the guns were reliable because you can they basically never overheated, and there was six guns. So as long as you were close to the target, which is like the main downside of the 50 cal machine guns, you could perhaps keep up in terms of damage dealt if you were perhaps not hitting with a couple 30 mil or yeah 30 mil machine or not machine guns 30 mil guns uh, you could potentially be outputting the same amount of damage but the problem is you get two less guns and you're not gaining anything from it you have worse survivability than the fury which again the fury doesn't have the best survivability of the tier I don't, mm, I don't know if it's the worst survivability out of American fighters, 
but I'm sure it's not super great. If we look at this, the airspeed is actually exceptional. The the airspeed on the Goblin has a higher rating than any of these other planes. But whoa, hold on to your horses. Let's take a step back and see exactly what is causing there to be better airspeed stats on the Goblin, shall we? So if we're going to open up all these airspeed stats and we are going to take a look at it. Well, the first thing we're going to notice is that the cruise speed on the Goblin is destroying all competition here. There is no competition. There is no denying that this plane has the best cruise speed. Cruise speed means little. Boost speed. Uh, it's lower than the Fury, lower than the J8M, but better than the Mustang. You kind of expect that, right? You are a tier higher. Boost duration. Six seconds, the same as the J8M. That is terrible boost duration, but you are a fighter and you have a jet engine. So you expect to have pretty good thrust from the engine. But again, um, the Fury gets eight seconds of boost and your engine really isn't that much superior than the Fury, right? You, and you get two seconds less of it. Uh, and you have significantly less uh, boost than the P-51H, but do realize that that is a prop plane, so generally prop planes have longer boost durations than fighters, or jet engines, and rocket engines, respectively. The last thing I want to know is the maximum dive speed, and whoop de doo I... Yeah, dive speed can be useful sometimes, but eh, it, it's the second worst. It's nothing to write home about, and it's not very good. So, what are we gathering from this? Well, it's worse. The only stat, or it's comparable to the rest, right? The stats really do not, like, wow, this is amazing. Because really, when you're looking at this, the speed, the, char the characteristics that you're really looking at to determine if a plane is fast is the maximum speed and the boost speed because that boost will get you up. Cruise speed basically allows determines how much speed you lose if you're um, not holding down the boost key. You're in the white for altitude performance and you're not like you're not boosting or you're not going up and down, you're, you're staying level. If you're level flight in the white zone without using boost, that's generally your cruise speed. So yeah, you have good, good cruise speed, but here's the problem with it. You only get six seconds of boost. So you're gonna be sitting at that cruise speed for a lot of time and other planes that have longer boost or have better boost, like the tier below you, the rocket-driven J8M, it's just going to do better than you. You're, you're going to feel like the J8M has better airspeed, and in my opinion, it does. Because while you only have 6 seconds of boost on the J8M, that rocket engine propels you to astronomical speeds in a very minute time frame, a very minute time window. And because of that, you just feel like you're faster, right? And you couple that with your altitude performance, you just feel that speed. You can feel it coursing through your veins when you're flying. You don't get that with the Goblin. You really don't. I'm sorry to say it, but your jet engine takes a long time to cool down. Rocket engines do not. My 302 uh, has two rocket engines. I don't remember how much seconds of boost it is, but it's not much. But it doesn't matter because it propels me to the red for airspeed instantly. Just just straight up instantly. And on top of that, my engines cool down so fast that I never actually reach the cruise speed before I'm able to propel myself with a full boost burst again. You can't do with that with the Goblin. It takes like 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds to get 6 seconds of boost back. It's horrible. You do not you're not able to boost frequently and because of that you're really just not that great and your boost speed your maximum boost speed just doesn't feel 
special. I mean... Yeah, technically it's faster than the Fury, but the Fury gets two seconds of extra boost over you. And if you're both using engine cooling as well, well, the Fury's just gonna go faster than you, honestly. Um, it's just, no, why? Uh, the Fury has a better maximum dive speed, so don't try to out-dive the Fury. Don't try to out-climb the Fury, because it has the same altitude performance. Okay. So, that's kind of what I wanted to drive home. Cruise speed is not everything. In fact, a lower cruise speed on a plane that des is designed, such as the Goblin, where you're considered a parasite fighter, that's what it's designed to do. You're supposed to be a parasite to whoever you're chasing. You're supposed to be, like, an annoying roach that won't go away. Those annoying ants that are just eating away at the house, you know. It, you're, they're not supposed to be cuddly, right? <laughs> they're, they're supposed to be annoying. Maybe not devastating, but you can't shake them, right? That's the whole point of it. You're not supposed to be able to shake a parasite fighter. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's important. So, here's a wise tip. If you're facing the goblin, and the goblin can outturn you, which you'll see it has some of the best maneuverability at the tier. If the goblin can outturn you, which in most cases it will, <clears throat> your next best bet, don't try to outspeed it, because eh, you might be able to manage that. This plane is not slow, but it doesn't feel like it has incredible airspeed for the tier like the J8M does, right? Because even the J8M, even when it gets thrown into a Tier 9 battle, you can still just zippy-zippy, and you you still have some of the best airspeed at the Tier, even at Tier 9. Um, so the J8M always feels like it has a speed advantage. The Goblin does not. If you're facing Tier 10s, this, these stats don't mean much. And really, even against other Tier 9s, other Tier 9s will either have better boost, like the Fury... So they'll be able to catch you, right? They'll be able to keep up with you. Or they just outturn you. I, I don't know. They, there's usually something that some plane... <laughs> the airspeed does not feel special. That's all I'm trying to say. I hope you guys get that. The airspeed does not feel unique. It does not feel all-powerful like it does on the J8M. And I get it. It doesn't have a rocket engine, but I think... After playing with it a while, that is the biggest downside, especially since you have the worst guns of the tier. And not only that you have the worst guns of the tier, you have the least amount of guns at the tier. Well, that's not entirely true. There are planes that have three guns, but you know what I'm trying to say. It has the worst firepower at the tier, right? And because of that, it just feels bad feels so bad. <sighs> yes, you have decent airspeed, but it doesn't feel special. It doesn't feel powerful like it does on the J8M. And that's that's a big issue in my opinion. But let's move on because I want to talk about maneuverability for a second. And if we take a look at this comparison, this plane, without a shadow of a doubt, has the best maneuverability out of this comparison. And I feel like the Fury has a pretty decent maneuverability for the tier. Honestly, for tier 9, a 10 second turn time without any equipment or anything, without a good pilot, that's not bad. You can work with that. That's that's really quite decent for the tier. Uh, the J8M, that's, that's abysmal. But you have such great airspeed that it doesn't really matter. And maneuverability... And the Mustang, again, really nothing to write home about. 8.9 seconds of turn. I, I get it. I'm specialized. I have some bonuses. I get it. But still, less than anything less than a 10-second turn time at Tier 9 and 10, I think is exceptional. So to have less than a 9-second turn time, that's good. A 90 rating for maneuverability, that's good. You also have top-tier roll rate like really freaking good turn rate 
241 degrees per second roll rate. That's about, that's a little less, it's a little less than three quarters of an entire circle turn in roll in one second. It's got a good turn rate, it really does. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's just really good. The next thing that I want to mention is the rest of the stats don't really do much. You're not, your minimum optimal speed not very good, your maximum optimal speed also nothing to write home about, your stall speed again really nothing to write home about. Um, before we move on I do want to go back one second to the airspeed and talk about one other thing. Cruise speed, having a lower cruise speed is sometimes beneficial and here's why. Here's why, especially when you're trying to be a parasite fighter I know I was going to talk about this for a second and I forgot about it. The, the cruise speed, being a low cruise speed but having a good boost speed allows you to get from low speed to high speed quickly. And that's why boost speed uh, on a plane such as that's designed to be a parasite fighter is so important. You want to be able to go very slow and get up to very high speeds very, very fast. That's what's going to make a good parasite fighter. This plane has a 430 mile per hour cruise speed. That's stupid compared to the rest of these planes. That's Nothing else even compares to that. But the problem with that is it makes it difficult to stay on tails of planes that move slowly. <sighs> Think about it like this. You boost really, really fast, so you can catch a target unsuspecting and you get on their tail very, 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 very fast, right? Well, now you're going stupid fast. You're going, like, red, red or yellow for airspeed. You're going ridiculously fast. Well, now you're going to overshoot the plane if you don't do something, right? So you slam on the brakes and you hope that you slow down. Well, if your cruise speed is 430 miles per hour, you're... <laughs> That means you really can't slow down to the point where you're able to stay on tails of planes that move slowly, like the J7W1. So this is bad. Um, it improves your airspeed stat, but it doesn't mean it's a good stat, right? And I, as much as I didn't really think about it like this, but the, the goblin depends on being able to stay on the tails of planes easily. And not only stay on their tails, but get to their tails without much trouble. Because you have such crappy firepower, you basically need your guns to always be firing in order to be advantageous, in order to get the most out of them. So having a high cruise speed is actually bad for the plane. Please remember that. What I just said right now, please remember that cruise speed, high cruise speed is actually bad for the goblin. And a low boost speed comparatively to the rest of the planes is also bad. So yes, you have a good airspeed stat, but it doesn't mean your airspeed's good because of the way that the plane is trying to fly. I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but I'm going to make myself understood a little bit later on when I make the connection. I promise you. Just stick with me. And the final stat, altitude performance. Again, it's good altitude performance. A service ceiling of 15,000 feet with an 8,500 optimal air, uh, foot uh, altitude is good. The J8M has stupid altitude rating. Like, it's just out of this world good. So don't look at that per se. Um, but I do want to make one thing no clear. Your altitude performance is good. And especially when we take a look at the rate of climb in feet per second, it's 582. Not even the Fury can keep up with that. And the Fury is kind of known for being a good high altitude fighter. And it is. It has good altitude performance. The Fury can perform well at high altitude. The problem with it is it doesn't have the same rate of climb. So if you're mid-altitude, you can use your rate of climb advantage, not your boost advantage, your rate of climb advantage, 
to get out of harm's way by gaining altitude, right? And that's what you, in order to escape pilot planes that are on your tail, either outturn them or escape upward. That's how you're going to escape your prey. If you want to live, you go upwards, not downwards. You generally speaking do not want to be below mid altitude. This is a mid to high altitude fighter and you use your advantage of altitude and rate of climb to escape your prey. That is how you fly this plane. If you do not fly it like that, you're going to really struggle to do well with it. You need to use your airspeed in that way. Okay, so now we've kind of gone out over the stats. And here's the summary. Worst at tier gun armament rating. In fact, it's the worst at tier 8 and below. I'm sure there's a tier 7 that has worse firepower. But I'm pretty confident. I, I don't know for sure, but I am almost 100% positive that you have a worse gun rating than a tier 8 any tier 8 plane. You are the worst for firepower compared to any tier 8 plane in the game. Pretty confident about that. But you're not a tier 8 plane. You are a tier 9 plane. You have very nearly worst at tier survivability even compared to tier 8 planes. Not quite because the J8M is more fragile but not by much. And the difference really is tier, and that's it. Um, most, almost all, probably 95% or more planes have better survivability from tier 8 upward than the Goblin. The Goblin probably is one of the least survivable planes at the entire tier, even among tier 8 planes. So you got worst in class firepower, worst in class survivability. Your airspeed is good, but outside of your cruise speed is not much better than anything. It's not much better than anything else. And as we already talked about, cruise speed does not equate to better airspeed. Very clear. That improves your rating, but doesn't necessarily mean you, it's desirable. Maneuverability. That is the one defining feature of the Goblin that is virtually uncontested at the tier. You really do have best in class maneuverability. And that is your one defining trait. Your altitude performance, again, is good. For tier 9, it's not bad. It's very good, but not outrageous. It's not extreme. And when you couple all these things together, you have worst in class firepower, worst in class survivability, okay f airspeed, like it's not bad, but there's reasons why it's not desirable. Best in class maneuverability, so that's good. And then eh for altitude performance. When you combine all those stats, it's very easy to see why the Goblin struggles to be a good platform. It's very important that you guys realize this. It's taken me so long to realize and pinpoint exactly what is wrong with the Goblin, and I finally came up with it. That is the defining trait about the Goblin that makes it not very good. Um, so, before we move on, I just want to say it took me a long time to specialize this plane. I had to destroy 270 enemy aircraft. You know how painful that was. That was horrible. I don't think I played too many battles, but I was kind of playing in a way that I was forcing myself to be top tier every time, and I was facing bots a lot of times, so it made it a little bit less painful. But even then, if I ever got stuck into a tier 10 battle, you feel like a tier 7, a tier 7.5, uh, because your firepower is about that of a tier 7. Um, it's probably a little bit worse than a lot of tier 7s, honestly. But it's probably okay. <sighs> okay for tier 7. Because your other stats are decent, your firepower probably doesn't suck too much for a tier 7 plane. Tier 8, it's still bad. Like, your firepower is really 
just bad at tier 8. So when you're stuck in a tier 10, when you have planes that have um, 900 hit points, 1200 hit points, even like 2500 hit points, forget it. And that brings me to another point. You have the worst in class gun power, worst in class survivability. You can't deal with bombers or GA. Even if they're bot, um, you have good sustained damage. <laughs> eh. You have good sustained damage. Your guns don't overheat very quickly, but you only have four guns. And um, so facing a bomber, you'll lose your pilot. You'll lose your tail wing, you'll lose your control surfaces, you'll lose really everything, your accuracy, all of it, it just dies, your engine's going to get knocked out, um, and because you have no survivability, it doesn't take them long to destroy you with your tail gunners, same thing with GA, same story, unless you want to play it super careful and always make sure you're outside of the gun arc of their tail gunners, you're going to take forever to kill them, if you do it like that, so... It's not even worth it to go after GA, but even if you do choose to go after GA, their tail gunners just tear you apart and you don't mean anything anymore anyway. So, just those two stats combined make this plane horrible. I don't normally care about survivability because light fighters, eh, they're not supposed to have a lot of sur survivability, but this is terrible even compared to other light fighters. And, again, firepower. I don't like having bad firepower, but this is abysmal firepower. This isn't bad firepower. This is abysmal firepower. It's not... It's abysmal. And yeah, that's that's the story of this plane. Again? So here's how I change it. If they want to do it like that, it, it wouldn't really make sense for the Goblin to have a lot of survivability, right? So you don't really want to change that. And it needs more firepower, but if we're... If it was up to me, I'd probably drop it down to tier 8. Because I think it, it'd be okay at tier 8. Because our stats are okay for tier 8. Um, but if that's not an option, if we're going to keep it at tier 9, this is how you fix it. I get that it has a jet engine, but I don't care. Give it rocket engine type properties. Why? Because this plane is designed to be a parasite fighter. Your maneuverability allows you to stay on your tails of opponents if you can outturn them. But, if you're going faster than them, it doesn't matter if you have a good maneuverability. You're going to overshoot them. And then you got to turn around and come back. And then that might give them the opportunity to attack you. So, if you, if you give it a rocket engine, you get a lower cruise speed you get a lower stall speed. And that's advantageous to you now because now you can couple that with your maneuverability and you won't be overshooting your opponents when you're trying to shoot at them, which is good because you want your guns to always be firing because if they're not firing, your plane is useless. Your guns always need to be firing or you just won't have a good score at the end. Your guns always need to be firing. So having a lower cruise speed, lower maximum speed, allows you to get a more maximum potential from the plane. I genuinely feel this way. A rocket engine is also advantageous because now you ha your boost is better. You still have terrible boost. You, I wouldn't want to drop the boost any more than what it already is because you already have the same boost as a J J8M. But your engine is not a rocket engine. So you don't get the same bonuses that a rocket engine does. Fix that. Give it rocket-like properties because then you can get up to speed quickly. You can get onto those tails of the heavy fighters and you can stay on their tails without them being able to do anything. Yeah, it's going to take you forever to kill them because you only have four guns. So if anyone wants to come and shoot you down, you're a prime target. But that heavy fighter can't do anything about you. You're just going to shoot them and shoot them and shoot them and they can't do anything about it. Except watch their hit points disappear and they will be able to watch their hit points disappear it's not you're not going to one shot a heavy fighter you're going to have to whittle their hit points down by having that boost speed and getting that boost speed back quickly by having a good cooldown rate just goes so far 
It's so good. And that lower stall speed, again, it, it'd be so good. If, if, if this plane, if they gave it rocket engine properties, that's the only change they need to do. I'm telling you, I've thought about this long and hard. Changing that one stat is all it takes. The only thing they need to change is that that engine typing. Uh, they can still call it a jet engine, but just give it rocket engine potential just so that it doesn't suck. Because I don't think anyone in their right mind is going to say that Goblin's overpowered if they give it a rocket engine. Um, yeah, you can stay on the tails of almost anything, but your firepower is so bad. It's going to take you so long to destroy anything, so if anyone wants to come and shoot you down, you're just going to die. You have no survivability. And then at that point, you can try to run away, but, like, if you run away, you're not doing damage. And it's just, it's bad. At least the J8M, with its low survivability, it's so hard to hit, because it's so freaking fast. Even against Tier 9 planes, you just leave the Tier 9s in the dust. Unless they have, like, engine cooling and they're maxed out, they can't keep up with the J8M. Even at Tier 9. And so that's why the J8M's airspeed actually feels beneficial. And not having survivability matters much. Because you're so fast. This plane has bad survivability. But it doesn't have good guns. You have to stay on your target for long times. So you're going to be in the harm's way with this plane. You're not a boom and zoom aircraft. Boom and zoom... You're able to have good airspeed, you swoop in, you obliterate your target, and you get the heck out of there. Not this plane. I promise you this is not this plane. Not this plane at all. Um, and because of that, it's just... I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's how I would change the Fury. And I think that one change, just giving it a rocket engine for the reasons stated above, having a lower stall speed, a lower cruise speed, which again will lower your overall airspeed, but it's actually a good thing because you get better boost. And again, having a low stall speed is desirable for this kind of plane. You're able to stay on the J7's tails without overshooting them. And a good boost speed allows you to get to the next target's tail quickly, which goes a long way for it being a parasite fighter. A parasite, you want to be jumping from host to host to host quickly. You don't want to be just out dawdling in, in, in open territory. You always want to find a new host to become a parasite for, right? That's, that's why it's a parasite fighter in the first place. And the engine is the number one thing that lets this plane down. It's the number one thing that I despise about it. Even the guns, like, yeah, it's terrible firepower, but if that engine was different, I wouldn't care. If it had rocket-like engine capability, I wouldn't care. So anyway, that's that's my thoughts on the Goblin. And then I'm quickly going to go over the equipment layout, because this equipment layout is the only way to set up your Goblin. Yes, you heard that right. It is the only correct way to set up your Goblin. Um... And how do I know this? Not because I'm saying that it's perfect for me. I'm saying it's perfect for anyone who flies the Goblin. Because there is no other way you can set up this plane for it to be effective. If you set your Goblin up in any other way, uh, equipment-wise, you are doing it wrong. And you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. I, I know that's blunt. And you guys might think I'm crazy for it. But I'm telling you, set it up like this. If it's not already set up like this before... And you will instantly see a change in the performance of the Goblin. It will instantly become better. And why is that? Well, I'm going to start with these two slots. These two slots are very straightforward. It's no question in my mind what you're supposed to do. Aircraft hit points. You don't have aircraft hit points. You don't have hit points in general. You have the worst survivability at the tier. And basically the worst survivability even at tier 8. So don't do that. You're just wasting it. And on top of that, your de uh, your negative is you decrease your maneuverability. That's the one thing this plane has. If you kill the maneuverability, you have nothing. So don't do that. Again, kill your airspeed. Don't do that. That's stupid. And wings resistance to tail damage? Pff, who cares? Pff, 
That's stupid. No, don't do that. Just don't. You're not you're not trying to be shot in the first place. If if there's too many targets for you to attack, you boost and you go into the sky. You'll lose your targets every time they can't keep up with you. I promise. That's how it works. Use your altitude, you lose your opponents. There's no one on your tail anymore. You're not supposed to be getting shot in the first place. And if you do get shot, you don't have hit points because you just die. So don't just just don't do that. Aircraft maneuverability, yeah, that's what you want. That's absolutely what you want. Again, only option, polished skin. For the same reason I just stated. Um, we're going to go to the cockpit now. And here you have two options. Two feasible, two feasible options. Navigational radio equipment, don't use. Waste of your time in this plane. There's better options. Cockpit armor, waste of time. You're not supposed to be getting shot in the first place. Don't do that. And on top of that, you lose maneuverability. Don't do that. Other option, G-Suit. I tested this when I first got the plane. It increases your airspeed at, or your maneuverability at high speeds. And I assume, they're very vague about this, but I'm assuming a G-Suit works in the way that at high speeds means that you're either in the yellow or the red speed for your plane. I don't know that for sure, but if they think logically, which if they did it any other way, it seems stupid to do. The only f a logical option is for it to work only if you're in the yellow or the red for airspeed. And when you're at those speeds, it inc increases your maneuverability. That seems like a good idea on pra paper, but here's the problem with that. You have a jet engine. With six seconds of boost, it takes you 20 seconds to get your boost back. And without your boost, you're not in the yellow or the red for airspeed. And if you're not in the yellow or red for airspeed, you're not getting use out of this. So don't use it. Sorry about that. And so if you're not getting use out of it, why use it? Why bother? Just, just don't. Just That's stupid. It's less stupid than the other options, but I I I really don't think G suit does much. I tried it, and then I switched to the accuracy, and I don't want to go back, um, cause I just feel like the accuracy is better on this plane. You have four guns. If your guns are missing, you're doing you're not doing damage at all literally no damage so just go with air with accuracy please for the love of everything that's the only equipment slot that matters on this cockpit okay oh, next one we have the engine and here don't do engines resistance to damage you're not supposed to be getting shot so don't put that on there that's stupid don't the other option, boost efficiency. That's what I had on my plane initially. But here's the problem. You kill your boost availability. How many seconds of boost do you have right now? You have six seconds of boost. If you put that on there, you drop it down to four seconds of boost. Four seconds of precious, precious boost. I don't care how freaking good your boost is. There is no way on earth four seconds is enough. <sighs> I don't do that. It it's bad. I tried it and it's bad. It's just bad. Just don't do it. It's just bad. Don't do that. If it was rocket boost, it'd be a different story. But the problem with this is you're not decreasing the time that it takes to get your boost back, right? It's not saying that you're getting an increase or a decrease to time it takes or increased cooldown of your engines. So that 20 seconds that it takes to get 6 seconds of boost, well, how about 20 seconds to get 4 seconds of boost? You get 4 seconds of boost every 20 seconds. No. You don't get anything from that. It's not worth it. And yeah, 
here's my reasoning with it. Initially, I was like, well, if I have terrible boost, it doesn't matter because I'll have the engine cooling, and then I can take advantage of maximum of 14 seconds of that increased boost capability. Yes, that's true. But that's only when you have engine cooling. So unless you want to use the premium variant of engine cooling, you're not going to ever have boost. And again, if you don't have boost, your plane's useless. You really, 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 really need to have boost. Whether it's to keep up with a heavy fighter or to escape from people chasing you, you always need boost on a plane like this that has such low survivability that boost is critical. So don't do that. Please don't. And so we're going to do aircraft maneuverability. Because again, Maneuverability is the only thing this plane has that is actually really incredible for the tier. And the last option. Engines resistance to damage, don't. Boost, efi boost efficiency, we already said don't. So we're going to do the uprated engine in this slot. Engine thrust is useful. Um, I believe that increases your cruise speed. I don't I don't really know. You're a jet engine, so sure, cruise speed is good. Just no, it's not good. But anyway, that's the goblin, and that's the consumable layout. That's the way you want to do it. Alternatively, you could do engine restarter, but you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. If you have no engine, just suck it up and die. Like, don't get shot in the first place, and you won't have to worry about your engine being knocked out. Um, yeah, you'll die if you have no engine, but you do have good maneuverability. So, I mean, you could use that to your advantage. Um, and, like I said, you need to have boost. So, I just feel like engine cooling is... It's not an option. I feel like on other planes, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, well... If you're okay with your engine being knocked out for a little while, you can put engine cooling on instead, and then you get bonuses, and it'll be a little bit more beneficial to you more frequently. Nah, nah, not on this plane. You, engine cooling's required, guys. Uh, if you don't normally use engine cooling, now's a great time to learn, because it's without engine cooling, you're not doing much. And then here, eh, just just do the two that I have. It's it'll help you. It'll make your life a lot better. And honestly, if you're like me and you have a bunch of this incendiary ammunition, it might not be a bad plane to put it on. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not, I'm not advocating people putting gold ammunition in their premium planes. So put it in your plane if you have the money for it, because. Um, at, if you're getting fires on your plane on on the enemies that you're facing, it's just gonna help your your damage output, and you're gonna need all that help you can get from your damage output, honestly. But yeah, I was very mm, opinionated on the uh, equipment and passionate about the consumables, but that's the way you gotta do it uh, if you want to be successful with this plane. Pilot experience, always marksman one and two. I don't care if this is the goblin or not. That's the first two skills you're going to you're gonna do. Um, because you have four guns. If those guns aren't hitting, you ain't doing no damage. You need those guns to hit all the time. All the time. In order to do damage. Marksman one is good. Marksman two is excellent. Because... It increases the accuracy against maneuvering targets by 10%. That's really useful, guys. On a plane like this, it's very helpful. So put it on your plane first. Uh, engine cooling. Eh, here's where it kind of gets wishy-washy. Like, uh, resilience. Yeah, that might be useful, but you don't have hit points. If you get low enough that resilience is going to kick in, you probably have like three hit points left. Is it really worth activating an entire skill for that? Uh, debatable. I mean, it might work, but I don't recommend it. So, I think these two are useful. Engine Guru 1, 
maybe this would be a good plan for Engine Guru 2 as well. That's, that's your call on that one. Cruise flight, maybe, but you have such good cruise speed already, I don't think it's really that useful. Um, Raptor Strike, I guess, hmm. Nah, no, no, you're, you're not really a heavy fighter, so uh, I don't think that would be a good option either. You're going to be mostly sitting on your opponent's tail for long, extended periods of time. So, yeah, that's that's the skill you really want. Or not, not that. It marks on one and two are the top priorities. After that, I really think these two skills are the must-haves. Increasing that maneuverability its your best stat, so try to increase that. Um, and then lastly, either Engine Guru or Resilience. Maybe uh, this if you have a random spare point. But yeah, that's kind of the pilot skill, so I'll let you kind of figure that out on your own. It's kind of up in the air, honestly. And uh, that's the Goblin. Alright guys, I am back, but we're not actually going to do a live battle, <clears throat> sorry, because the live battle, um, the first time I tried it, it crashed, and the second time I tried it, the we just got supremacy instantly, so I'm not going to worry about that, this battle will speak for itself, honestly, um, so it's not a big deal, plus this battle is the absolute maximum length of <clears throat> possible uh, which is 12 minutes 12 minutes is the maximum length a battle can last and this battle lasted that long so um, in interest of time and my sanity for trying to rec I don't want to record it a third time trying to get a live battle um, we're just gonna do this uh, replay which I think will be plenty um, especially since it's so long. And hopefully that will keep the video under an hour. So anyway, before, a little bit of backstory with this replay. Um, it was during an event where, uh, you could get 150% additional crew experience, um, if you destroyed at least 10 enemy aircraft. And then also you could get an additional 10, or. 50% additional credits if you also got 10 enemy aircraft killed. Uh, it was just during a really, really special, unique uh, weekend event that we had last time. So that's when I was flying. And as such, the results of the post battle, um, or the post battle results, are the absolute maximum I feel you can make with this plane uh, in the standard conquest game mode. Um, so do keep that in mind when you see the post-battle results. I also had, uh, I think, a 100% credit booster active. I had premium account active. I had this plane, which gives you additional bonuses. And I had, uh, I think, a 100% regular experience booster as well as 300% uh, true experience booster active. So when you see the post-battle results, that's what's happening. But um, that's the absolute pinnacle money earning potential for the goblin um, is what you're going to see just now so yeah do keep that in mind and now back to the replay um, in terms of this map uh, we are against all bots uh, we are top tier and it's just death nail and I uh, we are both at this time trying to specialize our goblin so neither of us are, are actually specialized. On top of that, Discord, during the time of this recording, was not working correctly. I was managed to get into Discord with some difficulty, um, but Deathnail, just no matter how many times he tried, was not getting into Discord. Um, and as such, we tried in-game voice chat, and that too did not work, um, because it said it was down for some reason I don't know um, no one ever uses it so I'm sure they just don't care about making it work properly <laughs> right so yeah that's why we're just going to use the chat but it actually kind of works in our favor and I'll tell you why when we're not actually communicating with voice <clears throat> as ironic as it sounds 
we've already played with each other so much that I know how he flies, I know how he thinks, and he knows how I fly, and he knows, <clears throat> wow, and he knows how I think. And as such, we don't really need to be communicating through voice chat in order to know what each other is doing. And um, I remember very specifically when I was playing this replay, I was constantly looking down at the minimap and seeing where he was because this plane doesn't do very well by itself. If you're getting multiple targets on you at the same time, it's really good to have a wingman to kind of come and help you out. So we're just very careful and we do use a lot of communi communication with the F keys, um, namely F7 if we got someone that's being annoying or we'll press F2 on a target if we know that, that plane's going to be uh, a difficult subject of matter uh, for our wingman and uh, you'll see that quite a bit this replay. Further, furthermore, because it is a center airfield map and we wanted to see what the absolute, absolute maximum potential we could get out of this plane was, we actually um, did not care to capture sectors and if you were watching it's significantly far into the battle and there's still not all five sectors captured even for a while there was only two sectors captured and as such no one was getting points for those sectors for a while which is exactly what we wanted because we want the battle to last as long as possible um, in order to get those maximum points that's what you want so squall is going to appear in two minutes and uh, I intended to spawn camp. That's the only thing I cared about. And, you know, we're watching the situation. Yeah, we might not be taking sectors, but that's because our bots aren't failing. Um, we still have 2v2 on sectors. The points, we are ahead, but it's basically completely even, which is exactly what we want. And as such, I'm just not worried about it. I don't care about the situation. And I'm just going to farm points. That's all I care about. So Deathnail's coming in and he's going to come and help us out. But do realize, because of my high speed, high crew speed, I would have just overshot that guy, no problem. In order to avoid that, I did a upward loop over so that way I could get back on his tail without overshooting him. And that's where a rocket engine would have come in handy because I wouldn't have had to do that upward loop I could have just continued to let my guns fire because of that lower cruise speed um, would allow me to get to a lower speed when holding the brakes. Um, it really does make a big difference having a lower cruise speed but a high boost speed. And that's, you're, you're, pay, pay attention to those situations where I'm going to overshoot the target and so I hold my brakes down but still not enough and I do an upward loop over to try to um, get, stay on their tail yeah okay that one I was using I was talking in chat so I actually had stopped looking at my plane for a little bit so a bot came over and killed me but I was on low health anyway so I didn't really care and anyway we're gonna respawn here in a second but um, there's not really a whole lot going on uh, it's still two sectors to two sectors, which is exactly the situation that I wanted because not all five sectors are captured, which means this battle is just going to last longer. And it's, this is the dream situation. I'm fighting bots. I don't have to worry about sectors. This is the dream scenario for the goblin. And in most planes, a 14,000 personal point game at this stage in the battle would actually be pretty bad, honestly, uh, especially when you're facing bots of this caliber. They're not exactly pro bots, and I would have expected to have a much higher score. But alas, that is not to be. Um, and you can see, even against a tier 8 Tempest, it does take a while to kill it. Um, yeah, it was consistent damage, but I wasn't doing damage quickly. And I'm going after this IL-40, and you'll soon see why that's a bad idea. But um, I don't, I don't very much recommend it. 
I'm actually just below where his gunner can reach, so he can't actually shoot at me. Um, if he was able to shoot at me, I'd be in a much bigger world of pain. And the only reason I did go after him was, number one, it was Squall Line, so if I killed him, he'd be gone permanently. And secondly, um, there was nothing really else to shoot at and I wasn't in danger of getting people on my tail, so there wasn't really any threat of doing that. Now if we take a look at the score, the enemies do have three sectors, and they do have more points than us. So at this point, it is imperative <coughs> that one of us goes and flips a sector. Um, there's only three planes left on the enemy team, and as you can see, I just wrote that in the chat. So now, if I'm going to farm this battle as much as I possibly can, there's a couple things I need to keep in mind. Number one, don't kill all enemy aircraft, because if I do, the battle ends. And secondly, make sure that they don't win by getting more points than us. So I'm going to go and attack air defense here. And I'm pretty sure I wrote that to Discord. I don't know. No, I did not write it yet, but I will eventually. I will say to Death Nail, hey... If we want to get the most out of this game, let's attack air defense and we'll make the battle last longer. Um, oh, he just said ADA, so um, I know I was thinking that, <clears throat> but it's a good thing that Death Nail was on the same mindset. And honestly, that's why I enjoy flying with him because him and I have like we always think the same. Like, just we always do. We don't really have to tell each other's pl or tell each other what the plan is because we just know what the plan is without saying it and that's something having that kind of uh, ability to fly sorry guys I have a bit of a sore throat right now but having that ability to talk about or not even have to tell your wingman what's up um, in planes that are very generally not overpowered is just something very special and as you can see, we are still behind on points, but we are ahead on sectors. And again, we have less, or, or that airfield's just about to get flipped. So if anything happens, we're going to lose, um, especially since there's only a minute and 12 seconds left on the clock. I'm going to need to actually flip a sector at this point. I know we're going to get four sectors, but if we lose another sector, we would lost the battle because of the points. That, or I can go and attack the um, rem last remaining aircraft, which uh, I believe was last spotted over our command center in the south. Um, but I'm, that's not really an option, so I'm going to come after and attack this uh, garrison. We have 39 seconds left on the clock. We are still behind on points. Uh, there's 35 seconds left of the battle, and if we don't flip the sector now, we're going to lose. 27, 26, 25. I need to flip the sector immediately. We're still behind on points, and we're not going to get our uh, bonus um, a really good. You don't get as much points when you lose. So we're going to do everything we can right now to win this. We have four sectors, 10 seconds left on the clock. We're still behind on points. Seven seconds left on the clock. Three seconds left on the clock. We have more points. As long as I don't die, we win. And Bam! That's the battle. We win the battle by literally three seconds. Uh, that's that's all the time it took for us to go from f losing the battle to winning the battle. So, yeah. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more once we get to the post-battle results, and I will meet you there. Alright, so we're at the post-battle results now, and as you can see... We made almost a million credits. Um, I'm going to say about 971,600 credits. Actually, that's the, the exact amount. But to put that into perspective, uh, we made 23,000 personal points this battle. Something right around there. Uh, just out of curiosity, I was playing my tier 8 premiums. And I'm not, I think it was in the Dornier 335. I got... Um, 23,000 personal points almost exactly as well and to do a comparison between the two 
I actually made about 850,000 credits with the same boosters and same bonuses as uh, this battle. So just to put that into perspective, you're only making about 100,000 credits per battle uh, if you're getting 23,000 personal points. So honestly, it's not that often that you're even even going to get 23,000 personal points with the goblin. Uh, as you can see in this battle, I had to basically spend the entire battle and making it last the absolute maximum length. It shows that the battle duration is 1204, but technically we're only supposed to be able to go till 12 exactly. 12 minutes is the maximum cap on the battle. So this one went 4 seconds beyond that. It just took 4 seconds for it to register, I guess. But the thing I'm trying to say is it's not really going to make you more credits. If you can find a tier 8 premium that you really, really enjoy and you can make 20,000 personal points a battle or 15,000 personal points, you know, if you can reliably get a pretty decent score with it, you're going to have a pretty decent score beyond what you would be able to achieve in the Goblin on a regular basis. And because of that, because you can get a higher score in shorter lengths of time with tier 8 premiums, on the whole you're going to be making more credits, right? Because when I had the 23,000 personal point game, we hadn't even really made it to squall line yet. So the battle lasted about maybe 8 minutes, 9 minutes, so maybe anywhere between 3 and 4 minutes faster than or shorter than this battle lasted, right? So, in that amount of time, you could have made more credits than just a hundred thousand. You could have made your difference up just fine. So, that's the point I'm trying to make here. Uh, you're not actually making more credits just because you're playing a tier nine premium. It just doesn't work like that. If you can find a tier eight premium that makes you more credits, well, you're just gonna make more credits then. Uh, technically per battle you have a lower potential but you're gonna be getting a higher potential personal points per battle thus you're getting more credits because it's not a significant enough difference in the amount of credits that you make to make a difference. And If I look at the next screenshot uh, we can see that we destroyed 24 aerial targets, 340 capture points, and 6 destroyed while defending. That's really about the maximum you can possibly do in this plane. But, look at the pilot experience. That's one thing this plane does exceptionally well. 254,000 pilot experience. That's not the most pilot experience I've ever gotten. I've had matches where I've had like 315,000 pilot experience. Um, but that was due to the, like the times threes and times five doubles on top of everything else. So 254,000, that's still nothing to scoff at. That's a lot of pilot experience. So this plane does very well at pilot experience, but so does all your other tier 8 premiums. It's nothing special, it's nothing unique, nothing too crazy. Uh, we did almost 10,000 damage to aerial targets, so that's really impressive. And total capture points, okay, this is actually kind of interesting. Capture points received 340, but if you look down below that, it says capture points received is 580. That's actually accurate. Both of them are accurate, I'm pretty sure. The problem is you get capture points while defending as well as attacking sectors. And because of that, I'm pretty sure the capture points received toward um, Hero of the Sky towards those uh, only counts the ones the capture points that you receive when attacking sectors so the 580 minus the 340 that's how many capture points you get while defending so that's what 240 capture points while defending so that's where the difference comes in um, but it's just something I noticed and I figured I'd mention it um, and then if we go to the last screenshot, we can just take a look at how many personal points we earned. It was almost 23,000. Uh, in a 23,000 personal point game, which I actually did get 23,000, but it wasn't much more than 23,000 in a tier 8 premium. Uh, that's where I did make 850,000 credits. So, like I said, 100,000 credit difference, it's, it's just not worth it. Um, 
if you're a collector and you want to collect the goblin, then go ahead, but uh, they need to change something about the plan in order to make it competitively viable, and I just don't think they're going to do that anytime soon. So if you're one of those unfortunate people that were like, gosh dang it, I only made it to the JL1A37 or made it to a different plane, I can guarantee you the JL1A37 is better than this. Uh, it's It's a bit more... It's complicated and it's not super easy to do well in the JL1A37, but it's still a heck of a lot easier than in this plane, I'll tell you that much. So, just keep that in mind. This plane's not all that it's m cut out to be. Not um, as powerful as some may lead you to consider. I, I've heard of people saying that they enjoy the Goblin, and that's fine and all, but you're not... You're a tier 8 premium at tier 9, you're not really that much better. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, consider leaving a comment down below. That's really the only thing I care about. Um, if you subscribe, I'd appreciate it. If you leave a like, I'd appreciate it. But I really want you guys to leave comments. I want to know how you guys feel about the Goblin. So let me know down in the comment section below. And with that being said, I will catch you guys later. And I think the next video I'm going to do is going to be another ultimate guide video, um, but it's probably going to be aimed more at newer players and trying to explain how Conquest works because I've seen a couple forum posts recently where people are baffled by how quickly some people can flip sectors. And I just want to show that it's really not hard to flip sectors quickly if you know how flipping sectors mechanics work and just how the game mode works in general it's very very quite easy you can flip a sector and just killing two planes that's all it takes uh, to flip airstrips and garrisons um, but I'll get back into that a little bit more in the next video uh, but that will be the next video is potentially over that with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you on the next one